Well, as you guys know, I run VMware vSphere in my home lab environment. And if you're running VMware vSphere, there are a myriad of tools, both native VMware tools, as well as open source tools that provide a lot of value to your VMware vSphere environment. However, there is one tool that I want to introduce you guys to, if you're not familiar with it, that can be a game changer when it comes to gathering information from your vSphere environment health statistics, configuration information, and a myriad of other things. You're gonna to want to see this tool and it is completely free. Stick around, let's see what we're talking about. Well, you may be wondering, are we talking about a VMware Fling? Are we talking about another free and open source solution? While there are a myriad of VMware Flings out there that I have used and they are fantastic, there is one tool that I'm going to introduce to you guys today. If you've not heard about it, you're gonna to wanna to go out and download this tool. This tool is called RV Tools from Robware.net. RV Tools is based on a Windows.net application which uses the VMware vSphere Management SDK. So it interacts with that SDK to pull all kinds of statistics and information from your vSphere environment. And one of the things that I think is super cool about RV Tools is the compatibility of this tool. So if you're running a legacy version of vSphere, if you're running bleeding edge vSphere, as in vSphere 8, this tool covers the gamut of vSphere versions. So you don't have to worry about compatibility with this tool. You're going to find value in using it no matter which version of vSphere you have in your environment whether that's a home lab environment or production. RV Tools is able to list information about many different things in the environment, including VMs, CPU, memory, disks, partitions, network, CD drives, USB devices, snapshots, VMware tools, vCenter server, resource pools, clusters, ESX hosts, you get the idea. It can list pretty much anything. So how do we get RV tools installed? What is the installation process and configuration process look like? Let's dive into that. The process to download and install RV tools is extremely easy. In fact, if you just Google RV tools download, you're going to no doubt land on the page that I have displayed here. And it's going to take you directly to the download link. So what you need to do is fill out this simple form. There's no cost associated with downloading RV tools. And all that's required is simply signing up with your name and email address. From what I have seen, there is no spamming that happens with RV tools. I've downloaded it many times and I've never seen uh, spam emails coming from. And you can select to receive communications. However, as you can see, this is unchecked by default and not required. So fill in the form and register and the download will begin. And as you can see, the MSI file downloads and all we need to do is run the MSI file to install RV tools. Once you kick off the MSI installer, the RV tools installation process is a simple next, next finish type installation that we're all accustomed to from Windows apps for decades now. First, we're going to accept the EULA, click next, we're going to select the installation folder as well as the scope of the installation. Already, we are to the confirm installation prompt. So click next. If you're running UAC, you're going to get the UAC prompt in Windows. Just click next. And that quickly, RV Tools is now installed. So we just click the close button. You will notice once you launch the RV Tools utility, it's a simple form that you need to fill in to connect to your environment. So you simply need to enter the IP address of an ESXi host or a vCenter server. So here I'm going to enter my vCenter server address. As you notice, the box is automatically checked to use Windows session credentials. Now, if you don't have your domain delegated in your vSphere environment, you're going to want to uncheck this. Here I'm going to enter my SSO administrator account to connect to this vCenter server. Once RV Tools launches, you're going to notice the interface already has displayed a wealth of information across the top. 
You're going to see tabs, you're going to see menus, and automatically we're going to see a wealth of information about virtual machines running in our vSphere environment. One of the things that I think is super cool about this tool outside of the compatibility and the obvious information that you can pull about all the configuration of your virtual machines, networks, hosts, vCenter server is the vHealth check that RV Tools is able to perform. If you don't know where to land once you first open RV Tools, the vHealth tab is one of the ones that I would say this is your go-to tab. In fact, with the vHealth tab, you're going to be able to proactively check the health of your environment based on a number of different health checks. In fact, the documentation for RV Tools mentions there are 23 possible health check messages. Just to call out a few of those checks and messages, you can see such things as, does the VM have a CD-ROM ISO connected? Does it have an active snapshot? What is the condition of your VMware tools? And is it current? Is it out of date? Is it running? Is it even installed? What about disk space? What about the number of virtual CPUs? And one that I especially think is phenomenal, that is difficult to get from many other tools, especially free and open source tools, is the check for zombie VMDKs. Now, what are zombie VMDKs? Well, as you guys know, when you are in VMware vSphere, especially in the vSphere client, you can right click on any powered off virtual machine and you can simply say remove from inventory. This removes it from your view for managing that virtual machine. However, it leaves all of the relevant files on your data store. So if you have a one terabyte or multi terabyte virtual machine lurking on your data store and you simply remove that virtual machine from inventory, you will essentially still have the same amount of disk space that is being used on your data store. However, you may quickly lose sight and visibility of that zombie virtual machine. And that's exactly what a zombie VMDK is, is it is those VMDKs that are sitting on your data store not attached to a virtual machine in inventory. In addition to zombie VMDKs, you can spot out zombie VMs, inconsistent folder names. Is the folder different than the inventory name in vSphere client? What about multipath operational state? Virtual machines that need disk consolidation. What about data store errors, NTP issues, cluster config errors, SSH enabled on the host? You're going to be able to bring the health and the configuration state of your virtual infrastructure to a really good point compared to where it may possibly be today with all of the errors that RV Tools is able to shed light on. So what you see is RV Tools loaded and connected to my quote unquote production lab environment. And what I have done is I've navigated to the vHealth tab all the way to the right hand side of your RV Tools interface. And then I have sorted by message type. And what this will do is it will group together the issues that RV Tools has found in your vSphere environment. So as you can see, I've got these grouped and they are listed alphabetically. So right off the bat, we've got a number of virtual machines that have a CD-ROM device attached. And according to best practice, that is something you don't want to run in production. Uh, as we scroll on down, we can see some CPU best practices that are being violated here. We've also got inconsistent folder names. So what the virtual machine is in inventory differs from what the virtual machine is on the data store. And aside from just causing confusion, uh, it's not in line with best practice to run in that fashion. Now, in my lab environment, I have added and deleted virtual machines and renamed just due to various purposes. So that's what a lot of this stems from. Now, it also includes best practices for your ESXi hosts. As you can see here, we've got NTP warnings. Either I don't have an NTP server set or the NTP service is not running. Uh, we've got some performance tips, security tips as well with the SSH service that is running, snapshots that are present on a majority of the virtual machines I have running in the lab. Then as we scroll down, we've got VMware tools are out of date. Now scrolling on down to the zombie VMs and zombie VMDKs. Now this is a really awesome check that RE tools makes clearly visible. 
So these are virtual machines that I have either removed from inventory, forgot to delete, or the delete process for whatever reason did not clean up the VMDK files. So this is a great check, especially for data store usage. So if you have a data store that is getting close uh, to some thresholds possibly of usage, this is a great tool to pull out and just at a high level, make a quick check of your zombie VMDKs or VMs. If you're like me, how many times have you quickly spun up a power CLI prompt to connect to a cluster to then figure out your power CLI query to be able to pull the exact information that you want from your vSphere infrastructure. I do that all the time. However, I then usually pull out RV tools and I'm able to look and query for information in the pre-built views in RV tools and pull the relevant information from my vSphere infrastructure. And to me, time is so valuable as vSphere admins, as IT ops, as DevOps engineers, that we need these types of tools to quickly gain access to information. And RV tools allows you to do that. So I want to show you guys some of the information that you can gather outside of the vHealth tab that we've already looked at. Now you have the tabs all the way across the top of the program. So you can click on each tab and view the relevant information for that particular tab. However, I want to turn your attention as well to the menu. So from the menu, you can break out the information based on the virtual machine itself or the ESX host. So if I start with the virtual machine, we can look at info, CPU, memory, disk, so on and so forth, snapshot, VM tools. So the snapshot one is always interesting. You get an instant filter of information for your snapshot view. Hop over to the ESX menu. I can take a look at all of the hosts that are in the vCenter server connection that I have made. And as you can see, you get a wealth of information about the host, CPUs, detailed CPU information such as hyperthreading, cores per socket. We get the ESX build, the boot time, DNS servers, network information, uh, serial numbers for the virtual machine, service tags if those are available. We get the BIOS information, UUID. You can view your license information. You can view the switch information. So which uh, switches are assigned to which hosts. And then you also see detailed information information about the virtual switch itself. You can look at service console information, VM kernel information. So if you want to see all of the information regarding the service ports as well as VM kernel ports such as vMotion, you can see all of those things here in this particular view. On the VM tab, if you click the info selection, you get a wealth of information here. Creation date, change version, you get the CPUs, memory, mix, total capacity, get resource pool information, fault tolerance, HA monitoring. If I look at the CPU information, again, detailed information on the CPUs, uh, disk information, we can take a look at all of the hard drive disk sizes for the virtual machines that are configured, the path on the data store. You guys can see this is just a phenomenal wealth of information. And a shout out to the developer Rob, who is a fellow VMware V expert and an awesome developer who has provided this tool for the vSphere community. Hopefully this video has brought this tool to your attention and after watching it, you can run straight out and download your own copy of RV Tools. Well, I'm Brandon Lee. Please do like this video, subscribe to the channel. I hope you guys are doing well. I hope your home labs are being upgraded, expanded, and otherwise running very well in 2023. Please do like the video and subscribe to the channel and I will see you guys on the next video.